I got really a very interesting story. This 1979, Garolitis and John McEnroe play in the finals right. of the U.S. Open, and then you run into them. I ran into him on at the midnight that night we were on Fifth Avenue. They were in, Vitas was in his yellow Rolls Royce. And there are the two guys that played that day in the final of the U.S. Open. What made it unique, it was the, maybe it'll be the only time two guys from New York City played for yeah. the national championship, both from Queens. Mm. And uh, they were running around. They were, they were, they were bar hopping that what night. What tempers. I knew, I knew them really, really well. And I used that match. I recreated that match. And I did profiles of both. And, of course, I depicted what Vetus, mostly about Vetus, how much of a star he was in this town. And at that moment, he was the man of the moment in sports in this town because of Studio 54. And I recreated a lot of, uh, of what went on there because I was a uh, habitué. He was Mr. Uh, January, yeah. Vetus. Yeah, I, was, I did my steps there, you know, <laughs> in my prime. What about Ali? You mentioned the fact that you covered all of his fights. You covered yes. Ali Frazier, then went over to Manila. And you were in, and I found this to be a great story, when he lost to Michael Spinks, you got a chance to Leon. go into Leon Spinks. You got a chance to go into his dressing room when nobody else was in into right. his hotel. Was right. it dressing room right. or hotel room? I did. Uh, it was his uh, hotel room at the Hilton in Las Vegas. Uh, that chapter is called Ali's Decline. I chose to write about the end of his career. I had covered him for because of, of ABC Sports. There's a picture of me with him and his entourage in Manila at the Thriller Manila, which I recreate. But in the chapter Ali's Decline, I begin with that fight that he lost to Leon. He took Leon uh, for granted. He didn't come to the news conference. CBS had televised the event. He wouldn't come on afterwards so I went up to his uh, hotel room door and knocked on the door and asked for Pat Patterson the head of his security I had done a feature on his entourage about six months earlier so I was a star to them you know I put them all on TV Pat says come right in as if I was invited you know <laughs> and there's Ali in his robe still with the fight talking with his mother on the couch wow. she's crying and he said listen mom I, I just misjudged this guy I'm gonna come back I'm gonna beat him he looked up at me asked his mother to get up and I sat down we did the interview like as if we you know, we had uh, reserved the time for it, and that the next morning it was on Good Morning America and World News Tonight. Uh, Arledge made the decision to lead off World News Tonight with that because it was Ali's first defeat. So he gave me a complete scoop. It was very, he was very nice to me. Who's the most interesting sports character in today's landscape, Sal, to you on, on, the, on the scene today here in New York? Paul LaDuca. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know... You know, I, I, I don't see anybody with magic. I'll tell you the truth. Maybe A-Rod, because he's such a big star. You know, but these are different times. Uh, i show you how different it is. I read today in the paper that uh, two nights ago, A-Rod had dinner at Le Cirque with the president of the Dominican Republic. Now, I can't relate to a guy like that. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's a big star. Yeah. It's different. The, the, the big athletes at that time had more color. They weren't so corporate as they are now. Their, their comments after games are couched. I think it's overrated to go into locker rooms now. We all must do it. It's part yep. of our jobs. They say nothing. They're they handled. have go-to guys. You know, Johnny Damon speaks for the Yankees. And uh, uh, and uh, David Wright speaks for the Mets. The other guys hide. Yeah, you know when you go into the different. dressing room who you're going to go to. You also talk about Fred Dreyer, the former great giant. Fred was yeah. the most colorful guy to come through New York in the last 40 years. He was a surfer boy from California, played at San Diego State. He was recruited by John Madden, who was an assistant under Don Coriel. His San Diego State team could have beaten the New York Giants when he came here as a rookie. He was an absolute panther. He led the Giants for two years in making tackles. And he, he, he was, uh, I got him his first sports jacket. He, he, he was a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy, size 13 bowling shoes. Uh, they wanted to eat, have meat steak morning of games. He said, my mother raised me macrobiotically, he ate oats in the morning with honey, and they thought he was nuts. <laughs> Meanwhile, he said, at 1 p.m. at kickoff, I'm trying to digest a steak. No, I'll eat oats in the morning. He was a natural member. He turned out to be a great actor as Hunter on NBC. Yep. He did an absolute knockdown drag out imitation of Wellington Merritt that was hysterical. And he used to put on shows, a training camp, it's in the book, about how you would imitate everybody on the team. He was very good at it. And outspoken, actually talked his way out of here and went out to the LA Rams and prospered very well. Do we need to even buy the book? Then had a great point? joint We've called got Legends in Long Beach oh, sure. that burned down eventually with uh, Youngblood and all of these uh, great Rams over the years, and they haven't had the football in L.A. since. Right. The right. USC is now the pro right. team right. in right. Uh, Los Angeles. I defy you to read anything written about an NFL team like Fred Dreyer's chapter because it's the absolute inside. They aren't as smart as they think they I'm are. I'm going to read that right. book tonight before I go to <laughs> bed. Was there, in our final 30 seconds of this segment, was there a favorite story in here, Sal, the one that we haven't hit? 
Uh, actually, it's the, uh, the first Ali Frazier fight, which I recreated. I had a lot of fun doing it. I was there that night, and I spent a lot of time in the library. I recreated the entire fight, but the backstory is an amazing story. Frank Sinatra worked the fight as the photographer yep. for Life magazine, oh. made a friendship that night with the head of security at Madison Square Garden, Joe Acrofrida, called him Joey Coldwater, and changed, Frank Sinatra changed Joey Coldwater's life. It's an amazing story. Mm. It's not often you hear names like Joey Coldwater anymore, but <laughs> Sal's got them. Sal's going to stay with us. The book is uh, In My Rearview Mirror. Back in the day, the games the athletes played on and off the field. It is really, if you're a New York sports fan, this is a, a terrific read. When we come back, we do a little something called Rush Hour. We're going to indoctrinate Sal into that. We'll come back on our broadcast in just a moment. Bye, Sal.